What's up guys, it's Abla here, and today I'm going to show you how to make daisy wallpapers. A lot of you might have noticed that I've been posting a lot of wallpapers from my screenshots of daisy onto the daisy tv website. Quite a few of them have been gaining quite a lot of popularity recently. So much so that daisy tv actually reposted four of them onto their twitter and facebook and that got a lot of popularity. For those of you who don't know, obviously if you're watching this you'll know that I do videos as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the program that I use is called GIMP. What you want to do is you want to go to your browser, open a new tab and go to GIMP download in Google. Click on GIMP Downloads, and either download via BitTorrent or directly, it doesn't matter at all. Leave that to download. Okay, so once you install the program, you want to open it up. You should get a screen something like this, okay? If you don't have the toolbox or the layers menu, which you will need to make a wallpaper, you go on Windows, you go on Dockable Dialogs, and you get Layers. This gives you this window. Click on toolbox and it gives you the toolbox. Next what you want to do is you want to go on open. Go to where the screenshot that you want to edit is located. So today I'm going to be editing this screenshot right here. I've got to be careful about how I think about this because normally I do a lot of things when it comes to, when it comes to wallpapers automatically because I've used this software for so long. So I'm going to do my best to describe each and every step that I take. So now you've got your screenshot open of your game. You look at it and you think, right, is that zoomed in enough? Does it, f do the characters and the scene fit the whole screen? Say you want to focus on this character right here, and maybe not so much this character, obviously, because it's small in the background. Perhaps you might want to zoom it in. To zoom in, you go on the layers menu, you click, right click on it, click scale layer, and then just scale it up. So say I'll scale it up by what another 130 pixels. Then you get this little cross tool and you just drag it around to see how it fits. That seems to fit quite nicely. So we're going to go ahead and get along with it. So what you want to do is you want to go to colors, brightness and contrast. Normally I would up the contrast by about 30 and then adjust the brightness accordingly. So maybe to about 30. If you click Ctrl Z, Ctrl Y, that was my other wallpaper. Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y, you can see the difference. This one stands out a lot more and it just looks a lot more brighter and upbeat. What I would normally do is I'd like to add my own colours to this. So what I would normally do, before anything else, is I would adjust the brightness and contrast, then I would go to the colour balance, in colours and colour balance. First I'd start with shadows, you think, right, what can I do to the colours in this photo? Honestly, just have a play around with it. You can see you, you change the shadows to red, it'll make the darker bits and the blacks more turn into more red. At mid tones is like sort of the more calm colors, so quite a bit of the sky, the clouds will turn red if I do this. You go into the highlights, and this is the really bright parts. So like the really bright clouds, the side of his gas mask right there, all that sort of stuff. I would normally just adjust them very, very slightly. Depends how you want the image to look. Do you want it to look darker or sort of, I don't know, evil looking? Or do you want it to be like bright and upbeat? It depends what kind of screenshot it is, what's going on in the screenshot. If it is something that you want to make dramatic and epic, maybe put a bit of red in there. Maybe when you adjust the brightness and contrast, maybe don't put quite as much brightness in. So you would adjust the contrast but maybe not adjust the brightness quite as much. That way it looks darker, but you're still going for that more epic, dramatic effect of the screenshot. And if your colors still don't seem like they're how you want them, you can go into colors, hue saturation, 
and adjust it in here. So say you want it to look even more colourful, you can adjust the saturation. I don't tend to do this, I don't. I never touch saturation, just because I don't think that saturation does much good for the wallpaper. If you'll see here, if I adjust the saturation a lot, if there is any pixelation in the screenshot, it will show. Not only that, but it just doesn't look natural. If you're still not happy with the colours, you can adjust the hue slightly. Okay, so enough for colours. A lot of this is down to your own creativity. I'm basically just showing you how to use GIMP to make them. And my thought process on when I create the screenshots. I wouldn't tend to ever use the rotate tool, such as this, like this. You can if you want to, but I just don't think, again, it looks very good. Okay, so on to the main part of blurring out the background of the image and keeping the focus on the character in the wallpaper. Obviously, if it's a wallpaper, or a screenshot rather, of say, a scene, um, some sort of landscape view, in Daisy, you might not want to do this, and might, this might not be necessary. You can do it is using the scissor select tool. It's not very intelligent when it comes to selecting things. You can see here it bounces out away from the trouser leg. Sometimes, if it's a dark screenshot, it won't even give any space. It'll actually cut into the character and around. It might not do it as much here, but you can definitely see, such as here, here here it bounces off when you come to blur this and if you ever want to add an outline to the character it is not very accurate at all and you can see there are very jagged lines the manual way of using the lasso tool the free select tool is probably the most accurate because it's because it's manual you have to do it yourself but you can see your, with your own eyes where you want to select so you have to go around the whole character like this I would normally do it like this purely because I just think it's the most accurate. I tend to zoom in a lot, a lot more and take my time with it. Okay, so now we have the, the have the selection of the character by these bits here. Uh, what you can do with these bits after you've done all of this, just click the fuzzy select tool, click shift, rather control, sorry. Just quickly select these parts here. Doesn't matter too much if you can't get each in every single pixel. Okay, so now you have the whole selection of the character. What you want to do is go and select, click invert, filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just blur it by however much you want. I would tend to go for about 10 to 12 point blur. I think I'm going to go for an 11 point blur. So there you have it. Get rid of the selection, click none, boom, you have your wallpaper. What you can also do, if you want to add a slight faint outline to the character, just to put a bit more emphasis on him, which I did in my latest AK Beast wallpaper, which I'll put on screen right now, you can add your outline by going on this little button down here, create a new layer, click that, click transparency, make sure it's the same resolution as your image, click OK. Then what you want to do is, while you've still got your character selected and after you've blurred the image, click on grow. If it's 1080p, I would grow it probably by about 4 or 5. We'll go for 5. Okay, uh, yeah. After you've done that, you want to re-invert it so that it's selected the character and not the background. So now we can get on with doing it. Grow by 5 points. On this layer, select the layer. Um, I would either go for just a plain black or a plain white layer. That's what I would tend to do. Again, personal preference down to my own creativity. Click on bucket fill tool. So you'll see the whole character gets painted in white. You don't want to remove that selection as I just did there. What you want to do now, and make sure when you fill it, it is filled on the top layer that you just created. If you do, if you have this layer selected and you do that, you can see that it just fills yeah, it just fills it badly and you can actually see here that it is filled on the image if I delete this layer here you can see that you've filled it on the image you don't want to do that so make sure it's on the layer now go back on to select click shrink shrink it 
by the amount which you grew the selection by. So for me, it was five points. So you want to shrink it again by five points. Then all you want to do is just hit delete. Again, go on Gaussian blur. I would go for a 12 point blur on this one. And then just reduce the opacity on the top to make the outline more faint. Again, what you can do uh, to just contrast before and after, drag the layer below and drag it on top. And just see which one you think looks better. I think the white looks better purely because it just makes the character stand out a lot more. So, and then just go on merge down and there you have it. You can, if you want to, add your own Daisy logo. I don't like doing that anymore because I just think it's obstructive to the uh, wallpaper. If this little bit down here, this white streak down here really bugs you, just scale it up a little bit, say by 20 pixels. And there you have it. Virtually gone. Then go on file, export as, choose the, uh, the um, folder you want to save it to. So for me it's my, my wallpapers. Make sure it's a .jpeg. Click export. I'm just going to go for 100 quality, maximum file size, maximum quality. Then what we're going to do is head over to Daisy TV. Get Daisy TV open. We're going to also open Imgur. You'll need to post it to Imgur because that is the only place that um, Daisy TV allows pictures to be uploaded from. So you want to go to where you save the picture. For me, it was on my desktop in a folder called My Wallpapers. I have done a lot of wallpapers in the past. Okay, so you want to find the latest one that you just made. For me, it was this one. Just wait for it to upload and process. Copy the link, go to Daisy TV. You must have a Daisy TV account to post something. To the right of Add Video, there's a little camera. That means Add Picture. Paste the link in here. Call it whatever you want. I'm going to call him Beach Bum Bandit. It's a showcase of a wallpaper, so you click Showcase, select where it is on the map here. Enter the description if you want to, and click Share Image. That's it. That's all you have to do from start to finish of editing a screenshot into a wallpaper and then posting it on Daisy TV. That's it guys, that's pretty much how I create my wallpapers, the very basics of how I do it. As I say, it is down to your own creativity. This can apply to any game screenshot, not just DayZ, of course. Thanks for watching guys, I hope this video helped you out a lot. Make sure to like and share on DayZ TV. Get this out to DayZ TV, so we see more of these awesome wallpapers. Not just from me, or any other one, anybody else that currently makes them, but from all of you that like seeing them. I'll see you guys in the next one.